What's up guys, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, where my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand concepts of engineering. And in this video, we're going over free body diagrams. So a free body diagram is a diagram where you draw an object to better understand the forces that are acting on it or how that object is behaving. And so you can think of the object as being free from its surroundings and those surroundings being represented as forces or just left out completely. And so the goal is to better understand how this object is behaving and oftentimes in engineering to know what those unknown forces are. And so what we need to do to start off with is first we need to draw the object and we can draw a simplified version of it. It doesn't have to be complicated. And really what we ought to know is the important parts of what's going on. Next, we need to establish the coordinate system. And this mainly is to get an understanding of which direction is which. Which way is the x, y, and if it's 3D, which way is the z direction. And that will help us to later what we'll call establish equilibrium equations. And so the third thing we need to do is show the forces acting on the object and then label them, whether they're unknown or known. And so oftentimes those forces will be gravity from the weight of the object itself. It could be a force acting on it like a cable or a rope pulling on it. Or maybe there's a load sitting on top of the object like a beam. Or sometimes it's where that object is being held to the wall or up from the floor or whatever it might be resting on, you might get a normal force or a reaction force from that connection. So something we need to understand when we're dealing with free body diagrams and especially with earlier engineering is that we're not going to represent ropes, cords, and cables as having mass because their mass is often insignificant. We also need to understand that their tension throughout the whole rope or cable is the same. So at one end, it's going to be the same at the other. And that's because it also doesn't stretch. So our, we're not going to worry about the rope or the cable changing length because of stretching. Another thing we need to understand is that pulleys are often also massless and frictionless. If they weren't, we'd have to deal with the friction and the inertia caused when they were rotating. And finally, springs are almost always linearly elastic. Or in other words, they follow the law that F, or the force of the spring, equals K times by S. So K is a property of the spring that tells us how stiff or flexible that spring is. So if we have a higher K value, then that spring is going to be more stiff and it's going to be harder to compress or stretch. If it's got a lower value of K, then it will be easier to stretch or compress. So S is the change in length of the spring. A spring when it is in its equilibrium position isn't being compressed or stretched. And so say if we have a spring of length 10 inches, if we stretch it out to be 15 inches, its change in length is 5 inches because you subtract its stretch length by its equilibrium length and you get its change in length. So the force caused by springs is its k value times its change in length. All right, let's say we have this situation where we have a weight hanging from a ring that is suspended by two ropes hanging from the wall. So if we want to draw a free body diagram of this situation, we have lots of options because really we can draw a free body diagram of any part of this. We could draw of the weight, we could draw of the ring, we could draw of the hooks on the walls, we could draw with ropes themselves. But what you draw the free body diagram of depends on what you're interested in finding. So say if we're wanting to find the tension in these ropes, we're probably gonna draw a free body diagram of this ring right here. If we just wanna find the tension in this rope, well, we're probably just gonna draw a free body diagram of the weight hanging down. So let's do that. Let's draw two free body diagrams of both the ring and the weight. So we'll call this free body diagram one, free body diagram 
number one. And we'll have the cylinder right here. And we're going to draw our axes right here, X and Y. And so that's to help us know that up is in the Y direction and side to side is in the X direction. And so we can see here that there's not really any forces in the X direction acting on this weight. All you have is gravity pulling down on the weight and the tension in the cable pulling up. So we'll draw that as an arrow coming down as a gravity and the arrow coming up as the tension in the rope. And so we don't really know the tension in the rope yet. We could solve for it, but that's not what the purpose of the free body diagram is. So we will label that tension for T in the rope going from B to D. So we'll call it BD. And then the force of gravity is depends on our weight. And so we know that in the metric system or the SI system that our units of force is not kilograms but newtons. And the way we get from kilograms to newtons is we multiply it by the constant of gravity, which is 9.8. So if we multiply 9.8 by 60, we will end up getting 588 newtons. So that will be our force pulling down by gravity. And we'll label that as gravity, so we remember that. Okay, so that's our free body diagram for that cylinder. It's pretty easy. It only has two forces acting on it. So it's pretty simple. So let's draw our free body diagram number two for the ring. We'll draw the ring here and the ropes coming off of it. Like that. And in this case, we don't really know what the forces are. So we'll just have to label them. We'll label this tension as tension BC because it's going from B to C and this tension as AB and this tension as BD. And you can see that the tension in BD or the variable representing that tension will be the same as our tension BD in our other free body diagram of the cylinder. And so we can use that later to solve for what that force would be inside that rope. All right guys, that's it for free body diagrams. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe.